Hello and welcome everyone. Today is the Thursday, December 1st community call uh, here at SCURF. Um, so yeah, we were just chatting a little bit before the recording and I figured that was a good segue to an announcement that in two weeks on the community call, uh, we'll have Lucas Newsy who helps put together the research pulse uh, and uh, wrote some of the articles around uh, some of the research with FTX rather. Uh, and he's gonna come join this community call and do uh, FTX recaps. So kind of looking back on what happened and what were some of the findings. And uh, we'll also tee up some research areas uh, that we'll probably dig into with some events in the new year, specifically around proof of reserve and address clustering. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll start with any other announcement that folks have, and uh, then we'll get into today's discussion around badging and kind of reputation systems and how that pertains to research environments. But yeah, any other announcements for the uh, community? Yeah, this Friday we have the community chat guild, which is 1 p.m. Pacific time. And we've got some fun stuff to talk about this week. And look forward to it's an open invitation for the community. Thank you, Brian. Any other calls? Yeah, please, Angel. Uh, yeah, so directly after this, we have the onboarding bootcamp. Uh, once of our bi monthly. Um, is it bi-monthly or is it twice monthly? I don't know. We have this thing twice a month. <laughs> and um, for anyone who's new or if you want to see some new faces or if you just want to learn more about like SCURF and why we're here, what we're doing, you know, pop into that meeting. It is listed in the events calendar. Um, and yeah. Great. Thank you, Angel. Yvonne, do you want to jump in? Sure. Um, if you haven't already, check out our latest episode, I mean, the latest episode of our podcast. It is uh, with Eric Christopher, or, sorry, Eric Christopher Alston and Kelsey Nabin talking opportunities and governance. And here is the link. Awesome. Thank you, Vaughn. Uh, and yeah, just to mention uh, the community call schedule in general. Uh, so today we're having this research badging, brainstorming. Uh, next week we'll do another internal discussion. The 15th we'll have the FTX recap. Uh, then we'll take uh, three weeks off with the holidays. Uh, and then in the new year, we'll, we'll mo most likely kick off with a presentation from 3327 on some uh, zero knowledge proof related research that they've done. And we'll share that ahead of time. Uh, and then we'll have presentations from CrunchDAO and TalentDAO, uh, as well as some internal presentations coming up. So yeah, excited to, to start planning uh, the community calls into the new year. And uh, yeah, if anyone does have any particular themes or, or elements you wanna hear about or any specific industry groups that you think are working on something uh, interesting from a research perspective and can come on and share it, uh, please feel free to uh, to let uh, uh, Angel, Paul, or myself know. Um, Cool. So any any other uh, announcements from the SPIRF team or any other events? Yeah, Paul? So I just want to jump in uh, following up on Vaughn's uh, reminder about the podcast episode is we also have the writer's cohort that is concentrating on the um, podcast that the SCRF interviews right now. So expect to see some in the coming weeks more activity on those threads and um, help us out, like help us welcome some of those people on those threads uh, to help answer some of those questions. Uh, dig into those episodes more. It's a great opportunity for us to do so. And then also feel free to help out the moderation team if you see some stuff that's like a little bit off topic or we're kind of helping uh, new people into our community to kind of see here's the level of discussion that we're after. So help us out there. So flag something or if you want to encourage someone to um, support their point a little bit more, feel free to do so. Great, thank you, Paul. Anyone else? Let me know if you do have anything else. If any, uh, otherwise, please feel free to to drop it in the chat, especially for folks who, who might have announcements about uh, outside communities or any other interesting uh, general events. Please feel free to drop that in the chat. All right, cool. So uh, let's jump into today's discussion. So uh, for today, we wanted to get into the topic of research badging. And so, um, 
in general, this kind of touches in both the tooling and the, you know, the thinking around what does reputation really mean and stand for uh, in research environments and what are the things you want to let people gain reputation from. Uh, and so I'll, I'll just start with a, a bit of a ramble on, on my thoughts on both sides, but really intending this to just be a conversation starter uh, and, and hoping to uh, to get folks, uh, yeah, diving in on a couple questions, really hearing opinions from the, the community and having a discussion on some of this. Um, but I, I know in the research badging discussion, it's really interesting to think about uh, sort of what are some of the, again, that, that element of what are the specific points to gain reputation around? And uh, what are the either the characteristics or backgrounds or whatnot that you actually want to capture and incentivize? Because say, if you just do it based off pedigree or you know you need a university email or an organization email or something like that, right? That inherently structures the audience in a specific way, especially if say you're using uh, uh, these kinds of badges to uh, gate you know who can have access to certain communities or certain functions like giving feedback. Um, I, I could see how the, these kinds of uh, you know questions are, are fraught with peril in a lot of ways because uh, there's the challenge of wanting to make sure you're using this as a positive enabler of getting people excited and using this as a point to create more positive incentives uh, and hopefully not just creating this as a as a pure like limiting and gating function uh, which can actually have uh, unintentional negative uh, consequences as well. So uh, I think uh, maybe an interesting point to, to start on and, and just hear what people would think about is around the question of, you know, do any specific skills come to mind? You know, are there any specific areas, whether it's, uh, again, whether it's a specific skill or like recognition of degrees or things like that, um, if we were to ever consider doing some kind of badging on the forum, what would you want to know about someone who's writing a post? Uh, like, what do you think would actually be helpful in kind of promoting more positive engagement uh, in those uh, between folks? So uh, I, I will pause there because, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to go too often just chatting on my own. So, yeah, Chris, please. I know for me personally, um, it helps to know someone's background concerning their degrees, uh, like their degree set. Um, and then if someone has been published, uh, there's this thing called the H index score, which is like the number of publications times the citations uh, that the person has been cited. So it's like someone with a high H index score who's like making a post, it would be relevant to know like, oh, this person is extremely uh, impactful in their uh, field of study. Um, and it's not just that someone has published, it's like how much, how much have those, how frequently have those publications been cited? Um, and I think those, the fact that an H index score is quantifiable and actually like a numeric value, I think that's something that is useful, uh, but also in the context of like some sort of, um achievement for like number of original posts or contributions on the form itself then i think allows some sort of uh someone can make an impact in their field but someone can also make an impact on the forum um and i think as a way to recognize impact as long as we have a mechanism that can recognize impact inside the forum and outside the form, it doesn't have to necessarily be the same reward. Uh, but I think that's where we need a transitive uh, reward, like representation. Yeah, and it's interesting. Oh, please, Paul. No, just so along those lines, like how. Um, I mean, so there's kind of just flaws in some of those impact rating systems. Um, as well. So how much would we want to bake that into some of the stuff that we're like badging for? Uh, and also like how dynamic. Like, so when we when we're kind of talking about badging and some of the badging conversations that we've had in the past and um when uh, Otter Space was here and all that, like we're kind of thinking of it as like non-transferable NFTs, like this is kind of a 
know, stuff happening in the industry, um, how dynamic would we want those to be able to be so that it can actually represent maybe impact at at that current time, not once upon a time impact. And so uh, coming from my former field, there's some people who made some really big impacts in their field and then kind of just rode that for the rest of their lives. And I don't know if we want to continually um, reward that. So um, when you're kind of talking about like, what is their impact? Um, I think we might have to figure out what do we mean by impact first? I mean, I don't want to overly complicate that, but um, just kind of wanted to bounce that off you also, Chris. Yeah, yeah, that that's a good point in that um but it's not that the systems don't have flaws, it's more so when someone has an H index score, it will never inherently go down. So it's like also if you only have one article published, you can't have a higher score than one no matter how many citations. So it's like many people will only have a one. So hitting a one is a milestone. Um but what I found out is like editor editors of of um oh, peer reviewed publications need to have an h index score of 5 or higher so there are points within academia with where there are like if you don't have an h index score of like 5 you're not actually necessarily going to be qualified to be an editor of a publication volume but you could if you have an h index of 1 you might be able to be an editor or you might be able to be a, a lead editor within that volume, but you're not going to be the actual volume editor because th your H index score isn't high enough. So that's where I mean those metrics having tangible uh, academic points in which, oh, th there's like, if you have an H index score of like five, then you can be an editor. But if someone has a score of 15, that's more than likely to be like a faculty chair or something that's like much higher within academia. So I think that's where it's it's like easy to hit points where we're like, oh, if you hit a score of one, that's a badge. If you hit a score of five, that's a badge. Or if you hit a score of like 20, then that's an, so it doesn't have to be something where it's like we're up we're changing the score all the time it's like oh if you hit the score of one that's a milestone enough to until you hit five yeah and that's one of those uh to to paul's point as well to potentially think of how to make sure to not over index on the H index, so to say, and to think of, you know, to your point, like, yes, that is a, a very good measure in its own right. And kind of given what it was, it was meant to look for. And if we were to ever try to give that kind of badge, right, is it important for us to immediately think of, well, hey, maybe we can't start releasing those kind of badges until we start quantifying some different kinds of impact to recognize that a lot of people, especially who have positively impacted the Web3 space and some of the ideas, sure, on the technical side, like if we look at cryptography, a lot of the folks who did make innovations there were well published and, you know, coming from uh, academic side, whereas a lot of the other sides that are not uh, coming from, you know, as much of the pure research perspective uh, have a lot more just applied innovation and so much positive impact from the, the engineering side or the actual uh, application side of things. So uh, how to actually measure some of that and especially as there are attempts at say you know like retroactive funding in other communities right like protocol labs is very interested in hypercerts and proposal inverters thinking of its own mechanisms for it and some other projects are thinking of how do you actually uh, execute uh, logistically something like retroactive funding of any kind and right for those kind of things to get triggered that means some positive thing had to have happened over time and so Right, I guess there, there's the questions of, uh, as some of these tools are getting built, do we want to experiment and, and think about some of this longer term experimentation, uh, as well as, you know, what are the things that we can try to capture uh, that might be happening more in the near term as well? Yes, yeah, so I don't know if th folks have any other thoughts in terms of, uh, yeah, other elements to capture there. Yeah, Chris, please. Um, I, I happen to have worked in industry, so I think that is a great observation in that um, the work in an industry 
it's not easily quantifiable in a way that's going to correlate to a certification or a degree. So I think in that if we can start to develop like a scale of deployments or uh, points, like say a, a project hits an alpha release or a beta release um, and they actually deploy it in the market, it doesn't necessarily help matter how many users they have. The fact that they deployed an alpha like project is is like a, a marked point in their development, and then they developed a beta pro like uh, for their project, and then they maybe went to market. So there's there's these points where we can say we're tracking the development of the project as the badge reward for your accomplishment, and not making it about how many users did you get or how many uh sales did you make but did you hit these milestones in development um and i think that's where looking back at my work in industry like development milestones i think are closer or i guess the closest thing to like a certified point of uh completion in that it's like if you create a trajectory for an organization that you define your own beta point or your alpha point and you hit those points that i think is like the the closest thing that would be a corollary to a degree path and a completed degree in the the industry like field Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that also just makes me uh, want to zoom out for a moment, maybe, and just ask the more broad question of, um, you know, potentially, again, in this research ecosystem uh, context, what are the, the broad level things to potentially badge for, right? We were talking about maybe some of the uh, existing qualifications as one bucket. Uh, or talking about, you know, skills that uh, that you exemplify in some kind of way, you know, in our context, that could be some kind of behavior on the forum or something, right? If you exemplify a certain type of uh, interaction or something like that, um, or it could be completing a thing, which I think uh, could be the more straightforward one to experiment around where we, uh, I think I've mentioned in the past that some folks have signaled that, hey, we would love to know who's finished your mentorship program, or the, excuse me, the writing cohort program, uh, to know if we ever have to hire some folks for uh, for content writing in, in Web3. Uh, and so something like that could also immediately benefit uh, external groups as well. So there's this balance of kind of who would actually immediately utilize any kind of badging uh, if we were to experiment around it. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if there are uh, any other kind of directions that people would be uh, interested in seeing, whether it's at SCURF or more broadly, uh, any kind of experimentation of uh, other flows or things to badge for. So I know that I would be, I'm very interested in, um, badging as far as uh you know some behavioral stuff uh, especially maybe research environments uh so that you kind of know uh, so at scurf we're very interested in kind of this collaboration uh, component um you know, do you collaborate i think is a valuable thing for a person to know if, if they're kind of navigating the scurf network um from some of the discussions from like some of the peer review conversations and things like that um I mean, this is much harder to badge for, but like openness to new ideas uh, or willing to be self-corrected, right? So this is often one of the problems in academia that potentially we have an opportunity in Web3 to um, correct-ish for, right? Sometimes uh, theories or approaches stay very popular because a person was able to produce an awful lot of PhD students who just are going to do it that way always, um, regardless of what evidence is mounting that that um, idea doesn't necessarily work. So um, being open to correction like is potentially badgeable. That is much bigger than kind of completed a task like you were just mentioning, but I think that that is 
maybe that gets the ball rolling in this discussion of what are some things that people would like to see badged for, even if we don't necessarily know the way that we badge for it yet, uh, but where are maybe some characteristics or behaviors or things that we would want to know if we're interacting with someone like just on a um, forum. Yeah, Chris, please. So um, one thing that is very interesting that has happened is now someone has been interviewed for the podcast that I have had previous work with, and it was just coincidental. But knowing that this person is still working in the blockchain space, but we had also previously collaborated and our trajectories like it's it's not i'm not uh there are collaborations that have occurred in publications but then there are collaborations that have occurred in uh the industry and that we did more of an industry collaboration even though he's an academic right now i mean he was an academic then but it's like um the 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 network connections that have been made before on work are more abstract than the connections that are made in a co-authorship publication so that's where like if there was a way to show that i had worked with this person on a project it would keep some sort of historical record of that collaboration having occurred but because it was in uh, an applied like career industry place it's not as easily captured as some sort of like badge like there we didn't capture it as a badge when we did it so it's like knowing that it occurred if if we run a pilot project together or if we do if someone peer reviews my work what there's no way to really represent that collaboration currently but there is an opportunity i think to show that like even scurf and protocol labs for example it's like um there's been collaboration between those two entities and i think it would be useful for someone to see like the history of those two organizations uh collaboration yeah no that's a the the element of capturing collaboration is uh is a really good point and i wonder how much of that how much of that could be via badging versus other mechanisms as well because that makes me think of you know what you were mentioning with the 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 person who you previously collaborated with um especially if that collaboration itself was not done in the scurf environment is that something that we you know do we just become a place that just like puts that excuse me badges out for the space uh regardless of whether or not people are already here uh versus is that say something that should be captured in the mapping project where if we're trying to have hey here's people who have published research and here's open problems and here's you know different projects working on solving those problems um yeah it's, i i hadn't thought of how do those two intersect of how, to, how does the badging interact with all these different kind of collaboration mapping components um but yeah at least that, as i was hearing you talk I, I just started thinking of some of the the components on the mapping side that uh i think some of the intended future at least is definitely uh trying to uh be able to capture some of that work side um yeah but and, and make it kind of publicly known as much as groups are uh, want to share that information publicly and and on that note like i think the voluntary because it's it's like let's say the only reason i didn't offer the person's name is just i'm not trying to like name drop it's more so in that if two people could consent to show that they had done work and record that as like an event i think that makes it much different like especially in the context of knowing that 
I had done work with this person in the past, it would likely validate both of our current works if people had seen that like, yeah, we collaborated in 2018 and worked together on a, like, or had, you know, he did like a peer review on our project or something. And it's like, then if, if that was visible with our other visible trajectories of work, the things that are happening in both of our works now would be more validated by the fact that we had worked together, but only if he wants to uh, acknowledge that, because this is part of it is like in giving the option to volunteer, some people don't want to necessarily be associated where it's like, I think that, uh, voluntary aspect of agreeing to publicly assert that there was a collaboration i think is the difference between saying we can recognize things before but if both parties don't agree that they participated then we have no business saying that but if both parties are like oh yeah we definitely did a collaboration but there's no th if we give them a, a mechanism to then represent that i think that's way different than one party saying the collaboration happened without the approval of the other party making it public. Yeah. Yeah, and especially, I know you mentioned the example of, say, SCRF and, and protocol, and in general, you know, with the different groups that we've interacted with and collaborated with in some capacity, even on the institutional level, what is the, the best way to kind of share that? That isn't just, I mean, I guess, is it just like a list somewhere? um or or does it become somehow reputational and again come back to the idea of badging that that is somehow a, a thing to be captured that hey there is this point of interaction uh and then i guess if that were to happen then who judges whether an interaction is worthy of a badge or not uh because i imagine if it's just like people interacting then you know it, it's very easy to just spin up like a, a shell of something just to get the badge without actual but yeah anyway that's going down that rabbit hole um and yeah coming back to the generally what to badge for because i think you know the more coming back to say previous conversations when we were talking about breadth versus depth i think there's the you know the the connection here as well between what you choose to badge for kind of also signals again, like what are you actually trying to support and promote and incentivize and capture more here? And, and thinking, you know, how could, uh, whether it's uh, for completing a thing, for showing a skill, for, you know, some, some existing qualification or whatever, uh, you know, what is the slate of things that we could badge for? Uh, and how does it actually promote a certain type of experience and, you know, like a journey of gaining value and contributing to a wider community? Um, and ideally creating it so that it's this ongoing reciprocal thing and minimizes the amount of purely, you know, singular transactional type of experiences that people have while recognizing that like we, we can't stop that from being the case, but more, right, the, the goal of why would we even want to badge in the first place, at least from my own perspective, is hopefully being part of a slate of things that can really develop this much more, uh, you know, incentivize much more continuous and, and deep ongoing interaction. Um, so yeah, not sure if, uh, if folks have any other thoughts at this point, either on other things to badge for or other ways to capture collaboration or what are some of the specific skills, uh, or any other elements that might've come up so far. All oh, please. Well, so, you know, one of the things that might make this discussion or maybe slightly take it in a different direction, but in kind of maybe that depth direction also of like, what has been the value also of that badge, right? So on one hand, we can have a conversation about what would we like to badge for uh, on the other hand, or maybe it's the same hand. Uh, we can have a discussion about uh, what is the value uh, for being badged, let's say by SCURF, right? So if I have, if, if we do, you know, start with kind of Chris's idea of we can index on the each index, like you get a badge, right? So what value does that do for the people who have already kind of earned those credentials and stuff like that? And I am mostly thinking this right now just because uh, Seth happens to be in this call, but like a th immediate thing we could kind of do with these, um, and then kind of to your point of like incentivizing 
these types of badges is that those badges make like a real impact on some type of program that Scurf does, like our use of source cred, right? So uh, having this type of badge inter, uh, interacts with the um, code or the algorithm of source cred in some type of way where if you have this badge or a series of badges, like you more immediately get um, some type of value. So if we're kind of starting with what is the value and who gets value from and um, why would someone want to come to Scurf to get that value if we're kind of starting there or if we're considering that also with along with what do we want a badge, like then maybe we can plug them into like immediate incentive um, like monetary incentives uh, or reputation or additional reputational incentives. Um, but that might also be a valuable framing of how we can uh, kind of do some stuff and uh, what we would badge for and why we would want to be badging. Because that's often a big question, like why do we want to, val to badge? If it's to let other people know that this person is expert, that's cool. If it's because it unlocks some type of opportunities for the person being badged, I think that's a slightly different conversation. Yeah, Seth, please. So yeah, I um, I'm really excited about the idea of like uh, you like using badges to boost somebody's uh, like cred score uh, or or how much they're rewarded. I think that um, source cred does something kind of similar with the trust levels in discourse. Uh, and I think that does improve the scores. Um, <clears throat> I also think that simply displaying um, a badge on on the forum, say, will change people's behavior. I think we see this, for instance, on Reddit, where some Reddits will have like little badges showing how much karma you have. And people will like debate that in the comments or like reference that in the comments, for instance. Um, so I don't think it, it necessarily even, it, so I think visibility just alone can be super important. Yeah, and that makes me wonder with source cred, especially um, how much it would be possible to either and I'm just thinking out loud, but either just create, you know, a um, weighting centered around having certain collections of badges or multiple badges, or, you know, can you create it sort of to be scaled that um, the more types of badges that you have, not just the individual skill level per badge, but just the having of more badges as a signal of interacting with more different components of, of SCURF or, or, or something like that, or creating special pools of source cred that it might be available only to people with certain badges or something like that on top of the general source cred pool. Um, yeah, I don't know if those kind of things are possible, but those would be interesting to, to think about. Yeah, please. So we, we might be able to just hack this functionality uh, like in source cred already. There is uh, a feature that allows you to um, boost the amount boost the amount of cred created based on uh, the category of post, uh, <clears throat> and so you might be able to like create get creative creating categories in discourse to do something like that. I will sort of uh, caution that. Um, you know, source cred the organization doesn't have a whole lot of capacity for doing like, you know, like doing code changes right now. I'm working on that, but um, but yeah, it's not something that, that I can make any kind of promises around. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're just more and more theoretically exploring. Um, and yeah, we, we should also just chat offline as well to see how, how we can uh, potentially collaborate and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, beyond the, the current landscape. But yeah, no, that's really interesting to think about, especially with boosting yeah, cred by category, um, what, that, what that kind of experiment could look like potentially. And if theoretically, if it's easier, uh, or I guess, are there any links between say source cred and, and Otter Space or any kind of non-transferable NFT uh, tools yet? Or is kind of badging uh, or any reaction to badges within Discord yet? Or discourse, excuse me. 
Yeah, I'm I'm curious if like the if any of the otter space people have looked at SourceGrad and have thoughts. Uh, I'm I know that MakerDAO was looking at uh, like integrating badges with SourceCred. I know I know I I know people have been talking about this, but and I know that people have minted NFTs based on cred score. Um, <clears throat> But to my knowledge, uh, there's no, th there are no projects that have directly integrated NFTs with source cred or anything like that. Okay, cool. Thank you for those leads. I'll make sure to check in with uh, with folks at Otter Space and Maker uh, and see what we could learn from what they've done. Maybe have a uh, a joint discussion or something around it in the new year and, and see how we could all learn from each other's thinking and approaches. Um, yeah, Chris, please. Yeah, so having seen the way the writer's cohort was successful and that it was being repeated, I think there is also a value in badging those types of events or those types of uh, courses within SCURF so then that they become contemporaries to the other badges that we're doing. And I think the more that we make those badges like on the same level as like the degree in terms of like it's it's a big deal for somebody to go through the through the writer's cohort and finish it and complete it. Um, so as long as we are giving those badges relative to useful and effective contributions within the forum, I think the impact will be the community actually starting to value those things in the same way as they do a degree or somebody's work in the field but taking it as seriously not just because there's the source credit payment associated with it but because of like if somebody completes like four writer cohort something then it's like a different badge than just one because i think that's where it's like if someone's willing to demonstrate to scurf that they put in the time and effort to be more uh, or to participate more and be more effective as a scurf citizen then making that reward system commensurate with what other I mean, again, we're we're not saying that I'm not trying to pretend we're a university or pretend that we're on the scale of like Amazon giving out certifications for their web service. But I think in taking those rewards seriously is how we over time build the reputation of those rewards as being actually meaning something to people beyond SCURF. Yeah, for sure. And I feel it, it's its own, say, bottom up way of trying to create some uh, sort of slow, like you're saying, composable uh, validations of completing certain activities and hopefully gaining certain knowledge and skills along the way. Uh, and external collaboration with those things being an indication of their value. Uh, and it's its own interesting way to think about it of, hey, Right, to think of like what, what is the H index equivalent of people interacting uh, with the actual uh, uh, soulbound token or, or non-transmo NFT or whatever it is, right? But is the value of it its creation and the independent indication of that thing being there, or is the value of the writing cohort badge really the fact that you know, like over time, we get ten different companies to reach out to folks with those badges and and recruit them for actual work. Uh, and that work be you know whatever and like we actually make this like a series of things that that try to uh, more um, really show the full value of those badges um, but yeah I wonder how that might be able to again like with the capturing collaboration how much of that is something more automatically captured than not um, but yeah not sure if anyone else has any particular thoughts uh, with any of the topics covered so far Yeah, I'd definitely be interested in bringing some groups together and having a, a discussion, including some other projects as well. I wonder if folks are interested in that too.
But yeah, I think in general, uh, you know, this is very much an exploratory conversation at this point. This isn't uh, necessarily trying to kick anything off by any, uh, it's not as though we're trying to advance a concrete project plan as much as generally exploring it. I think we are uh, going to follow through with trying to get the uh, outer space badges for people who finish the first two cohorts of the writing program, just because it's not going to take that much work. And uh, why not just get those out there and, and then we can figure out what to do with them if anything uh, later. Um, but yeah, this is a, another one of those. If you're if you have any specific ideas and you're particularly inspired by it, uh, feel free to to reach out and let us know. Always interested in in kind of starting to brainstorm how we can uh, think more seriously in this direction. Uh, and another area I'd love to get feedback on if anyone has any is kind of what are some related conversations that you think are worth having here. So uh, you know, hearing Seth mention some of the other groups, it makes me think of you know, does it make sense to maybe do a joint call between say SourceCred, Otter Space. Uh, MakerDAO is a group that might be experimenting between those two uh, and, you know, one or two other groups or something like that and just have kind of a, a group discussion on uh, what does this interaction look like, what are some of the technical challenges, how is it actually going in communities, something like that. So yeah, hearing if folks are actually interested in, excuse me, either getting the more direct how is this going in communities or, you know, from the tooling side. That'd be helpful just to gauge interest from folks. Um, and yeah, if there are any other kind of conversations, you know, I was thinking uh, generally along these lines, they're not exclusively on badging, but, you know, having the proposal inverter crew, uh, the DSI labs crew, the block science labs crew, uh, and one or two other groups and kind of talking about uh, how all of these projects might intersect to uh, to just build some, you know, it's a number of DSI projects building various tech components or community elements around experimenting with research and how can these actually come together uh, and experiment in a more coordinated fashion in the new year. Uh, so yeah, if anyone has any other kind of community events that you would be excited about, uh, please do let us know. Yeah, so it seems, uh, yeah, Seth, please. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, um, yeah, that sounds like an interesting meeting uh, and like, uh, like in part because I think uh, something that an issue that hasn't come up is implementation risk or or uh, or labor associated with that. Uh, I think it's easier. It's easy to have a lot of these, you know, like high minded philosophical discussions, but um, you know, like often, you know, like it, it's another thing altogether to like what's actually implementable. So I just wanted to kind of raise that. Yeah, for sure. That can be a, a, a good angle to kind of anchor that conversation around. Um, so yeah, I'll see if I can get something like that arranged in the new year. Yeah, Chris, please. So this conversation has also made me think that um, series or lecture uh, events could be something that could be badgeable, like say like Kelsey and a few other people who've participated in the podcast put on a lecture series. And it's not even necessarily like, meant to be a course um but i think if someone actively like maybe we have uh some sort of like participation metric where it's like if they show up and then there's like a question uh like set of questions just to prove that they were there um in the same way that like pop quizzes happen uh that type of and it, it doesn't have to be like i mean it could be test your knowledge on the subject or, or if like it how depending on how rigid we wanted to get with that qualification of proof provenance it's like that's a way we could encourage participation but also then show some sort of reward for participation in a way that 
over time, someone who does, uh, you know, 10 lecture series then has an accumulation of badges that represents some sort of knowledge collection or interaction with the knowledge set that it represents something. Um, and again, I think it depends on how much rigor we associate with those badges, but it's like, uh, that that's always like the less rigor, the more likely, you know, the less friction, but the more rigor, the more value. Yeah, that makes, yeah, that makes me wonder how, what we could actually experiment that with. And I wonder if the student group, the public good student association would be the place where we're most trying to structure some kind of a uh, sequential, um, yeah, like a consistent weekly lecture series that actually requires some kind of interaction and reading groups and stuff like that. Uh, so that can be a cool place to experiment with, or if we decide to, whenever we start focusing on the reading group again, or maybe if we want to trial a, a series of uh, you know, community calls or something else, it would be interesting to think where, where we can structure a few specific points of uh, interaction around specific knowledge, uh, and actually say of like, you both have to attend. Uh, and yeah, I wonder, is it quiz? Is it say a talk at least once during a call uh, with some kind of interaction and like it would all be recorded so it all can be audited and verified after and if something got missed, it can be checked. Um, yeah, so that's a that's an interesting one. I wonder if anyone has, has uh, thoughts on how we could potentially try that out or any reactions to that kind of idea. You know, we could potentially even do something, talk to some external groups that are doing that. I know we sponsored uh, before, then one of the last things we committed to sponsoring before uh, budget contractions came in uh, was with the Token Engineering Academy and their four-part lecture series on tokenomics um, and crypto economics with a, a professor, I'm forgetting what their name was. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that, that that's also, I, I wonder how much we can reach out to some external groups that we want to either directly support or at least collaborate with in, in a more informal way and see if uh, if we can uh, yeah, encourage them to also do that and, and see those as kind of recognized in both communities in some kind of way. Cool. Anyone have any other thoughts on the badging side of things? Any other kind of elements of this you want to explore? Any other thoughts you want to just mention with the group or questions to explore? If not, we have about six or so minutes left, so uh, we can sort of end the formal discussion, so to say, on badging. Um, and thank you all for, for joining and partaking in that. Uh, happy to kind of use the remaining six minutes uh, if folks are interested and open to actually just giving some feedback on, you know, what else you might want to hear in these community calls and any other topics, especially uh, you know, uh, we have some flexibility with what we'll talk about next week. And, you know, we have the FTX recap coming. Um, so yeah, uh, interested in hearing if folks have any particular topics they really want to hear about or something they'd want us to, to try to prioritize and make sure to cover before the end of the year. And if nothing burning by the end of the year, anything for wish list into next year? So I do know uh, months ago now uh, that we had one community call that was kind of the beginnings of a uh, what are the current kind of Web3 tools that exist. And I think we had started to put together a tools list. Um, I wonder if that might be something that we periodically revisit and um, update in a community call and you know what is maybe the status of that, if that's something that we might want to put, if that would be of interest to people. Yeah, I uh, that was something that Fotis put together for us. So I do want to check in with Fotis and just see if he's 
uh, still working on that. Uh, and yeah, we can coordinate to to check in with him and generally see how things are going. I chatted with him maybe a month or so ago, and I know it's been a, a busy ramp up for him with his PhD program and some projects he's involved in. Um, but yeah, definitely, uh, I think that's really cool, especially I uh, would love to hear if anyone here is partic has particular thoughts or is particularly excited about it. But I do think that could be a, a cool thing. Uh, to try to develop out and continue uh, contributing to as a community and potentially, you know, share on our GitHub and create as one of our public facing resources. Yeah, because in case, uh, I guess I'll just use this as a quick opportunity to plug in uh, another internal update. But in, in case folks haven't seen, uh, our uh, GitHub got cleaned up and updated. And thank you to uh, the discovery team and Maria excuse me, Inesh and Ralph for, for helping out with, and everyone else helped out with that. Uh, and we're also adding to this section, we're starting to add some projects. So we just got the Public Good Student Asso Association written up, and we'll get write-ups around our um, uh, audit database and research pulse and other relevant projects and the writing cohorts and you know other relevant projects here. Uh, but I think that we're also getting close to actually being able to just share some overall resources whether it's kind of the, the open problems in Dow Science list, whether it's the, the kind of Web3 tooling landscape that we can all update, uh, or the audit database that we should hopefully have a V1 of by the end of the year in some basic form. Um, so yeah, we, we have some uh, you know exciting updates coming from that perspective that hopefully can also uh, become uh, additional points of interaction with the community and things folks can get excited about. Um, so yeah, happy, you know, there's two or so minutes left. Happy to, to use it for any, any comments or thoughts that folks have. Otherwise, uh, we can just wrap two minutes early. You know, a week ago was Thanksgiving in the state. Seems like the itis is still holding with folks. And uh, But yeah, no, thank you all for joining today. We'll, we'll cut it a little short, a uh, couple minutes. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll see you next week. Uh, we'll, we'll provide an update uh, in the community channel with the exact focus uh, by early next week. Uh, thank you for spending part of your Thursday with us, everyone. Bye.